Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're good. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Insta360 Studio 2020 software. This is the free desktop software provided by Insta360 for their cameras like the Insta360 ONE R. The 2020 version of this software has received some updates compared to the last version. We're going to take a look at those updates and we're just going to see how to use this program to create different kinds of videos. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so here is the Insta360 Studio 2020. 20 desktop software. I have some videos ready to go here, ready to edit. I just dragged and dropped some random ones from my last trip um, from Hawaii, and we're gonna edit some of these. We're gonna take a look at what's changed from the last version as well. The first difference between the 2020 version and the last version of this software is, is the inclusion of thumbnails. Now, this seems like a really obvious thing and a really simple thing, but it's actually making editing a lot easier. Before, the files would appear like this, as just, um, you know, as just the file names, you couldn't actually see what they represented. That made it quite difficult to see which clips were of what scene um, when you took them and you wanted to, you know, organize them. It made it quite hard to use, quite hard to organize. So now we have a thumbnail mode, which allows us to see roughly where the videos were shot or the photos. The second feature added to Insta360 Studio 2020 is the inclusion of dynamic stitching. Now, when I import my files, dynamic stitching is automatically on, which is good because basically what that does is really improve the stitch quality compared to normal. I'm not sure why this isn't even an option. It should just do it automatically because as you can see here, if we turn it off, the stitching becomes a lot more obvious. There's a lot more obvious line. So just leave it on at all times. It definitely improves the stitching out of every clip that I've tried. Again, as you can see here, the stitching quite different when you turn dynamic stitching on and off. Another feature added is chromatic calibration, which improves the color and light difference between each lens. You can't really see much happening here, as I think I positioned the camera correctly so that the light was shining on each lens equally. But if you were to notice a kind of light difference between each lens, then you would turn on chromatic calibration, and these two turned on simultaneously should improve the accuracy of the stitching quite dramatically. As a final note on stitching, if you really wanted to get the best stitch possible, then just scroll down from the dynamic stitching tab, scroll all the way down and click here, this button stitching calibration, wait for a little while, and it should again slightly improve that stitch quality. So there are several options you can do if you find that the, there's too much of a line, an obvious line or a difference in light and coloring between the two lenses, just do those three steps and you should have a much better stitch line altogether. Now, probably the biggest upgrade in terms of features for the Insta360 Studio 2020 is the inclusion of an auto reframe mode. It's meant to automatically reframe your videos so that you don't have to. It's meant to select the best parts of your videos. It's meant to be able to automatically track you all just by pressing one button. That works really well on the app. It's a really awesome feature. It allows you to create really dynamic videos very quickly. You don't have to do any automatic reframing. And now it's available in some way on the Insta360 Studio desktop software. However, it's not quite as good. It's much more basic and I'll show you why in a second. Now, how to activate it is you see these little uh, icons here on the bottom left hand of each, um, of each thumbnail. All you need to do is click that and it will begin the process of analyzing your video. Now, this takes a long time, like a really long time. For a one minute video, you're probably gonna have to wait five minutes for it to analyze and then come up with the clips that it wants to come up with, depending on what you've shot. Now I've already activated auto reframing and done the analyzing part on this clip. It took again around about five minutes for this one minute clip. So if I just double click on that, what it does is spit out these different types of videos that it has created and it thinks may look good. I think they do different things. It depends if you're moving, it depends if you're staying still. But most of the time, what this feature does is lock onto you as a as an individual, as a subject, and it will follow you, it will track you, and perhaps move the camera in certain ways at certain times. So as you can see here, for example, it's reframed the video so that it's following me. We have some different options. So this is a different part of the clip. And again, it's just locked onto me and is following me. I think that looks, that's a pretty cool clip. 
doesn't have the same AI options as the app. It is very limited. This is basically all it does. It basically finds the cameraman or the person that's closest to the camera and it locks onto them and tracks them. That's basically what the auto reframe feature is. The last noteworthy feature of the 2020 studio update is that you can now adjust the speed of your videos, which has been a feature that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. Now you can see here, it, the option is under play rate and you have many different options available from a quarter speed up to 64 times the normal speed. Now it works quite well, you can preview it straight away. As you can see here, you can really uh, boost the speed of your video. You can create some hyperlapses. Uh, you will have to shoot in a certain way. If you wanted to create slow motion video, then I suggest shooting in the higher frame rate. I believe the 1R can shoot 50 frames per second, which will make the slow motion video a lot smoother. For example here, not particularly smooth, but it still works. You can see this is, um, this is definitely playing back at a much slower speed than normal. And seeing all of these clips that I shot in Hawaii is making me really, really miss traveling. I just, it's gonna be so long till we can travel again. And that is pretty much it for updates uh, when it comes to the 2020 version of the Insta360 Studio software. Now, if you want to manipulate your video and create a 1080p a reframe video, then you can do that on the free capture tab. Just click this button here, this little yellow icon, and that will begin the free capture process. So now we've clicked this yellow button, we have our first keyframe, which is essentially telling the program where you want the camera to be looking at that moment in time. Now you just select different options here, pan, tilt, roll, field of view distance and that will change the position or you can literally use the mouse to scroll and drag and that will also change the position. So let's just start locked on, um, zoomed out slightly. So we can start with this and then you just scroll along to the point where you want the next keyframe to be. So let's say I just want to zoom in on myself during that time and I'm locked in on myself, then scroll, move the camera and then select the yellow button again and that will add another keyframe. And there we go, we have our first two keyframes. So then you just continue to select your keyframes, move the image about on this screen using your mouse and then um, wherever you want the camera to be looking at any one point, just select the yellow button and there we go. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So as you can see, the video is following these keyframes which I selected. So that is essentially how you reframe a 360 video on the Insta360 Studio software. Um, it's a pretty basic program, but it does the job. I think if you wanted anything more advanced, then you would need to get something like Adobe Premiere Pro. The Insta360 ONE R app is still the better editing program overall. In my opinion, it has a lot more features and is a lot more powerful. I think the desktop software is pretty basic compared to that. But again, they're both free and I'm not gonna complain too much about free stuff. If you wanna know more about this program, check the link below. I have a website which will explain how to use it more and more about the features available if you wanna recap that. But um, yeah, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and I will see you next time. Bye.